This is Art. He fishes for wild carp in Wisconsin, and as you can see, he catches some nice fish. Me and Art were swapping some fishing information, and uh, he, he told me about his rig, and I, I want to share that with you today. All right, so what I have here is a basic mock-up of Art's bolt rig. It's not exactly to his specifications. I was just using the supplies that I have on hand. But it's enough to give you just a general idea of how it works. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty similar to my rig, but there are some key differences here. And I think they're pretty smart, and I just wanted to share them with you. Uh, maybe these are some kind of things that you can uh, implement uh, in your own carp fishing rig. And what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to start at the hook and then just go up and just give a brief, you know, just overview of uh, what the rig is. And uh, then I'll come back and do a little more in-depth discussion of each component uh, in the rig and uh, get more specifics as to uh, what, uh, what Art uses to build this rig. Now this is a bolt rig. And that means that uh, it's designed to uh, set the hook. This, this weight of the sinker sets the hook. When a fish picks up the hook, it pulls on it, and uh, the weight of that sinker sets the hook in the fish's mouth. That's how bolt rig works. But down here to start with, this, this is a hair rigged hook. I've got a size 4 hook here. I don't know what size hook you use. Or it probably doesn't matter. You can use whatever size hook you like. But I've got a size 4 here, hair rigged hook. Going up a short, short leader, about 2 inches of leader up to a locking snap swivel right here and then above that locking snap swivel is a bead then here's a method feeder and then there's another bead and there's a two ounce no roll sinker then another bead and this larger bead is uh, acts as a stopper for the bolt rig see how this bead is fixed in place I'll show you how that works and then this line goes up to uh, another swivel which hooks onto this uh, another snap swivel uh, and this is the main line here so this snap swivel just for the record this, I'm, this is ridiculously large okay this is just the one I had on hand so uh, I'm sure uh, I wouldn't use one that big and I'm sure Art doesn't either so as you can see with these um, snap swivels here down on this end and then also one at the top end uh, it's a modular uh, rig, so you can e quickly and easily change out the hook link or the entire bolt rig itself. So you've got a uh, snap uh, link at the top and a snap link at the bottom. I think that's pretty cool. You can you can totally change out those components real fast. Uh, you can you know have these pre-tied uh, and just ready to go whenever you need to change. Pretty good idea, I think. But we'll start up at the top here. This is the main line. And Art uses a 15 pound green suffix for the main line. That's braid. And then the snap swivel attached to the main line here. And that's a locking snap swivel, so it'll never, you can pull on it as hard as you want, and your line will break before that uh, snap swivel will uh, let, let loose. So from the main line, we'll go on to the bolt rig line here. So we've got another, another uh, barrel swivel. And for the bolt rig line, he uses 12 pound black fire line. He says he likes that because it's waxy and it's kind of stiff and so it'll, this rig will lay nicely uh, on the bottom with that kind of stiff waxy line. So we've got 15 pound main line and 12 pound line on the bolt rig. So this is the weak line here. Uh, if it breaks, it's going to break here first most likely. So coming down the main line to the main body of the rig here, we've got this first bead here. And this uh, bead acts as a stopper uh, to keep this sinker from sliding up the main line. And the way to accomplish that is to run the line through the bead twice. I don't know if you can see that or not, how there's the line on the outside of the bead there. The line has been run through the bead and then around and back through the bead once more. So that uh, whenever there's any tension on the line, this bead will not move. It's fixed in place. But if you let slack on the line, then you can adjust that bead up the line like that or down tight against the sinker. Art says he will adjust that bead uh, depending on the day, depending on how the fish are biting, if he wants the, 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 the bolt rig stop to be up the line a little bit or uh, just have the bead nice and tight up against the, uh, the sinker for, for a short, short uh, bolt rig action. But yeah, it's adjustable. 
this I like this I might actually start doing this on my rig uh, I use rubber bait stops instead but I kinda like this I might give it a try now below the stopper bead I have just another bead but Art uses a little piece of sheathing off of a 1 8 uh, landscaping wire he cuts little sections of it and uses little uh, they're little pieces of rubber tubing that go on here and uh, but I didn't have any of that I'm just representing that with the green bead here and he does that on both sides of the sinker we've got a little little tiny piece of uh, rubber tubing on both sides of the sinker and that's just a a bumper you know to prevent uh, this lead sinker from banging up against the line here on the stopper bead and uh, the same goes for down here just to keep that lead from from marring things up and this is a two ounce sinker here Art said he usually uses a one ounce sinker but sometimes a two and uh, Art, you are absolutely correct about the sinkers being the cheapest at Shields. I get mine at Shields too. Anybody looking for get cheap sinkers, look at Shields. They, uh, for some reason, almost everything at Shields is overpriced and expensive, but, but the sinkers are cheap. So moving down below the sinker here, here's a spring feeder. This is the kind of feeder that I use. Art makes his own feeders, and I think it's really unique the way he does it. He makes them out of the plastic deodorant stick containers. He cut, he'll cut a section of, of that, and uh, based on the picture he showed me here, it looks like he, there's some uh, plastic tubing involved, and maybe a piece of wire, and maybe some JB Weld or glue. He's got them painted all cool looking green with holes drilled in it, and uh, I, I really like those. Those are pretty cool, pretty cool. And then he had a, a smaller one that he makes out of uh, uh, drink lid caps also, for just for a smaller size feeder. But I was, obviously I don't have anything like that. That's a custom made item, made by Art. I'm just representing that here with the kind of feeder that I use. I buy these on eBay, spring feeders. So below the feeder then is another bead just to protect that uh, little knot there. And here's another uh, locking snap swivel. The hook link has just got a loop on the end here like this. And that just uh, goes on the on that a uh, locking snap swivel like that. Easy peasy. You can easily swap out your hook link with just just that quick. And again, like I said, that's the that's one of the modular features of this rig, as you can swap out that hook link here, or uh, for for whatever reason, you can swap out the entire bolt rig. And you can do this ahead of time at home. You can get these bolt rigs all uh, rigged up and tied up like this. And uh, you know, just have these in your tackle bag. And if you break off or something, uh, it's really just as simple as uh, you know attaching this to your main line, and you're back into fishing. So kind of cool, kind of cool for sure. And the line that Art uses uh, on his hook, on his little short little hook link here, is the same as the main line, the 15 pound green suffix 832. So we've got the 15 pound line down down at this end. And then in the middle of the bolt rig is 12 pound, and then up to you know 15 pound up at the the main line. So yeah, the the, the 12 pound is the weak link there. If the 12 pound line breaks, these uh, sinkers are going to slide off. The sinker and the feeder are going to slide off, and that fish will only be left with the hook and uh, a little short length of line. Now Art says he doesn't always use a feeder. Uh, it kind of depends on the casting needs of the day, and I'm kind of the same way. Uh, many times I'll just use a sinker only. So this this feeder here will just be missing from the whole rig, and it'll just be a sinker only, and just pack the pack bait around the sinker. And I, I'm kind of the same way. You know, just depending on the day, I might run a full uh, feeder rig, or sometimes just a sinker. If I have a lot of nuisance fish like uh, bullheads or something like that, they will they will sit there and they'll pick up on this pick up on the hook bait and eventually after they pick it up enough times it'll make its way uh, into the um, the feeder and just be tangled in, in the feeder so uh, if that starts happening I'll get rid of that feeder entirely and just uh, pack the baiter on there and uh, as you can see I just got it tangled and uh, yeah then the hook can it can land on there but it's not going to get hung up in anything so if, as long as there's still a hook bait on there if a carp comes by and sucks that up, uh, the hook is going to go with it. So again, this is just a mock-up of Ark's rig of me using the supplies that I have on hand. Uh, you know, he uses different uh, tubing in place of these beads, 
and the different kind of feeder and the, the line that I'm using is not the same kind of line but obviously you can adapt that to, to what kind of stuff you like to use too. For a side-by-side -side comparison here, you know, here's Art's rig down here and here's mine. They're very, very similar. I mean, not a ton of difference. And if you want to hear me uh, talk about all the details of my own uh, rig, I have a video on that. It was published a year or two or three ago. I can't remember, but it's the title of the video is called the 99% rig. That's what I call this rig because that's what I. This is what I use 99% of the time. If you want to watch me talk specifics about my rig, go into my channel and, and search for that video. It's called the 99% rig. But Art, thank you very much for uh, sending me this information about how you like to to catch fish, and obviously uh, you, you're pretty successful with this. It looks like. But I just thought there were some uh, smart little innovations here on this rig that I wanted to share with y'all. Uh, maybe you'd want to implement some of these little things in your own rig. But I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.